for being here today. We have with uh, Carly Smith, K-H-A-R-L-E-Y Smith, who is the Hayes County Emergency Management Coordinator. Good morning. Thank you all for being here again uh, for this update. Um, I want to start off with our, our most pressing uh, update and um, some discouraging news in that uh, yesterday we reported that we had a, a confirmed missing count of three and as of this morning that has increased to a confirmed missing count, missing count of 12. Uh, so uh, we do have uh, 12 missing persons that we are actively searching for. Uh, we have additional um, concerns uh, where we're gathering in information from reporting parties to make sure that uh, the residents and I'm sorry, are missing or are not missing. Again, I want to urge anyone that was in the area um, and self-evacuated or left and stayed with a friend to call our missing person reporting line. Uh, that's 393, I'm sorry, 512-393-7725. Again, it's 512-393-7725. That is to report that you uh, know someone that is missing or you yourself were in the Wimberley area or San Marcos area and left and are safe. Uh, we are trying to gather as much information as we can, uh, but we have confirmed a person count of 12 that we are actively searching for as missing individuals. Um, on that safety, safety note, we are expecting rain today. Uh, we are receiving information that there are small groups of uh, citizens that are mobilizing and going for uh, searches along the river themselves. I want to remind the public that we do have resources that are designated to those activities. We have local resources, regional and state assets that are actively doing search and rescues. Uh, it is not safe for the general public to go down and, and do those rescue or search operations themselves. Uh, we have impending weather concerns. Uh, we're expecting a substantial amount of rain later today. Uh, that will complicate the situation and add further danger for our residents and anyone that is trying to uh, be down in that environment. So uh, please allow the trained professionals to conduct the search and rescue exercises. And uh, we know that our citizens and community members are wanting to help and we promise we will allow that to happen as soon as we feel that it's safe in that area for, for those to go down and, and help the residents that were affected. Uh, I'm Hayes County Judge Burke Cobb. If people are wanting to know what they can do, the Red Cross is asking for volunteers. The Red Cross is uh, in charge of feeding and taking care of our people who are in shelters. They're trying to tend to the physical needs of those people. If you have time and wish to help, especially on this Memorial Day when we remember those who have given all for all of us. <coughs> The press is here today because there's a lot happening. We need people who will be here for the long haul, after the press has gone home, after everybody thinks it's over. I would personally like to ask you as a historian, amateur that is, <clears throat> if you will maintain photographs of what you've seen that's changed. I propose that we have a archival group of photographs that show what we lost in the flood. It's important that we remember this flood for years to come so that we don't take things lightly. One of our greatest problems has been to get people to understand how devastating a flood is. It costs lives and property and people are, it will change them forever. So today, remember those who've given themselves for us. It's not over. The rain is still here. Uh, the weather, long rain weather forecast shows that there will be showers probably the rest of this entire month. And so we can never let our guard down. We've got to always be vigilant. Again, if you're, if you know someone who's missing, notify us. If you know someone who's on vacation or somehow slipped away, notify us because we're expending a lot of manpower and time and effort to try to find people who may not be missing. That will allow us to concentrate our efforts on those who are truly missing. Thank you. Kenneth Bell, City of San Marcos Emergency Management Coordinator. A little bit about what's gonna to happen today. Uh, there are still uh, uh, 
rescue operations in play. We're, we're going to keep it in a rescue posture, especially with today's uh, uh, impending rain. We're looking at about two inches with the noon hour. Uh, you know, and everybody in this room knows that varies. Yesterday, or as of four, six hours ago, it was to the uh, north of us. Now it's on top of us, uh, coming our way. So uh, th this flood event has gone on for weeks in other areas. We're just now getting our piece of it. A lot of the re uh, resources that are on the ground here today are going to be uh, shifting and evolving based on whatever the needs are, especially in our general regional area. Uh, today we're going to be uh, trying to put cities back together again, get them whole through uh, public works uh, uh, teams that are being deployed by the state. Uh, we have an incident management team deployed by the state. In fact, they're probably going to be in this room later on. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, that uh, uh, will be here for at least the, the next few weeks. Um, on the recovery side, we have started those processes and know they're not <coughs> set up. 100% we're still trying to respond so you have two different phases in an emergency respond and recover so the donations volunteers uh, information letting that sort of thing are, are uh, will be solidified by end of day to day and we'll be able to help uh, uh, get people get the right things to the right place the right way uh, we are not seeking donations right now that is uh, that just adds to our response problems the storing categorizing and and managing things that uh, are being brought in. The best way on the front end of an emergency especially is just funding to the social services agencies that are helping us on the front end. Right now it's American Red Cross. That's the best way to do business on the front end of this emergency. When we get set up and are able to receive things and deal with it in an organized manner and not have two disasters go on, one the actual flood waters and the second one all the things that go along with it with the, uh, the, the uh, well-intentioned help can actually cause a lot of uh, problems for our, our teams that are trying to do good work. Uh, anybody else on the team? Okay, with that, is there any questions from anybody? Yes. Sir. All 12 are missing from Hayes County? Correct. Okay. And what does the search look like for them? What kind of teams are out? What does that look like? Can you describe it? We have. Uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, we have over 50 uh, ground personnel uh, from Texas Task Force One and local uh, teams that are actively boots on the ground, debris pile, and uh, uh, search type uh, scenarios. There, we still have people, as of last press conference yesterday, that are in little islands. Uh, we sent a boat yesterday, for example, for what appeared to be a group of people that were stranded and four of them wanted to come and the rest didn't, that kind of deal. And the, the only way they were getting off their little island was a boat. That was as of yesterday. So we're having to deal with that kind of issue. Uh, you know, who's, who's stuck, who's not, who, and where is everybody? Uh, you know, the, the, we actually have a pretty substantial list, but we're taking names off uh, fairly quick as well. Uh, you know, we have a list of up to 36 that we don't exactly know, but these are people that are calling from Georgia. I'm missing my brother, sister's cousin, whatever, and we find them uh, in a shelter or, or uh, in another location. That's what we're trying to clean up. The 12 that we're talking about is where we have visual, confirmed witness statements where something has happened. Uh, we met, had an interview last night with a gentleman in the hospital that was that helped lock down a lot of that number. That's where this is coming from. That's why that changes. We're not going to be uh, reporting things that we can't. Again, I, I brought this up yesterday. If I can't see it or get some real validity to it, we're not going to push that out to you guys. Uh, Can you confirm where they're from? If they're from the markers, the They're uh, right now. That once uh, the question was, can we confirm where they were from? Uh, they're from. It was a group of folks that were from several jurisdictions that uh, were uh, meeting together for the weekend festivities. Is it that same group of the families with the kids and everything? Correct, correct. So uh, we've seen the pictures of like eight of them, you know, the mom, the kid. So are there more children involved in missing, or can you tell us about the other people that we haven't heard That's about? That's what we're trying to figure out. There was, okay. it was a, an active, it was a uh, social engagement, which was very fluid. So we don't, I, we don't know. I, I've looked at photographs and uh, driver's license photos of all kinds of scenarios, just like you were saying. We don't know. 
that's what we're trying to lock down. So you don't know if there are, of those 12, I guess I'm asking how many How many are our kids? Children? I don't yeah. know. Okay. Are all 12 from that one group? They're all from that one group? Uh, no. Uh, again, we had uh, one that we located uh, yesterday, the fatality that was located. I do not believe that was related to that group, but we're still... <laughs> and I'm sorry, I mean all the missing. Uh, of the missing. Group. All the missing are from that one group? Uh, uh, yes. Good question. Better, better stated, thank you. Do you have any more information on that fatality? No. We are at there. I've talked to the detective about it this morning. They are uh, actively uh, trying to uh, determine who that is. And we understand the, the, the father, the husband father who was found, went off to surgery, who was part of that group. He was found 12 miles down the street. How has he described how what happened where from point A to point B where he ended up being found and how was he found? I, I wish I could tell you that information. Uh, there is again in the midst of the uh, the fog of the event and the response. I didn't interview that person, so I don't know the answer to that question. So are you guys searching 12 miles down at this point for the rest of? We everybody? have aerial photo uh, aerial uh, photography that's going on in a very. Uh, finite way. Uh, first thing this morning, they launched. Uh, we have drone uh, capability that we're bringing into this thing. Uh, GISing, thermal imaging, you name it, we're, we're bringing it to bear. Uh, this isn't a deal where uh, we're just using local resources, using state, some federal assets that the state's uh, requested to make this happen. So what's the plan today? If there is a additional rainfall, what's the plan? Well, again, that's going to vary. Uh, it depends on where the rain falls. Uh, as you can tell, and we kind of articulated yesterday, if it does X, then Y occurs. If it does Y, then Z occurs. So we are going to have to be fluid and flexible. With, and we're probably going to have to reset, re-respond to a lot of things. We'll probably have to reopen shelters in some cases. Uh, you know, we've closed down to where we're to two shelters. One of them only has two people in it. Now we may have to reset all that. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Well, uh, the, the warning, the alert system mm -hmm. that was sent out to residents, if, uh, any assessment about how well that's worked, if it goes planned? Well, it's hard to gauge. It's uh, uh, not exactly a new thing for us, but we pushed it a lot more than we ever have. And I think, uh, but we've also had the most uh, very historical events, so it's hard to uh, put apples to apples on the impacts. I think it did a lot of good. Uh, we had a lot of uh, people we didn't have to rescue, a lot of things that uh, didn't have to happen uh, as a result of it. it it's not perfect. Uh, there's buildings that we know don't have telephones that we had to send people directly to to bang on doors to get them uh, heads up on uh, the flooding, and that did happen. Uh, I know we there was a group 12 uh, buildings I know that we sent officers long before the floodwaters came and say, hey, get out, and uh, they did. Of those 12 people, the 12 people missing are all from one group? One group that, that came here? It's here. suspected. We are missing, we have 12 names uh, based on the interviews and things that we're figuring out. It sounds like it's uh, a uh, group that was having a uh, uh, festivities over the Memorial Day holiday that may have all been at the same uh, building at the same time. But don't break out on, on adults, kids, any of that? No, no, sir. Because it, 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 it fluctuated. Some left, some, you know, oh. nobody, does that make sense? Did they come from, but you said from various jurisdictions, from various places, not, not just Corpus or whatever it was? Again, multiple places, I don't know the detail. I, I know it's not all from Hayes County, but let's put it that way. Okay, and where were they staying in the Woodbridge area? All right, good question. I don't know. Uh, Carly probably answered that better. Um, Do you have an update on the father? No. Will the search continue 24 hours? No. Uh, for, we do search as much as we can at night. It's more thermal imaging kind of thing. We're not putting people in riverways uh, at dark if we can avoid it. Uh, we did have a call, for example, last night at the end of the day where there was people that appeared to be uh, have need rescue. And we, they were, you know, we heard them, went to them, and turned out they didn't. What do you mean by thermal imaging? Thermal imaging. You just drive by or fly over and see if you see some. Most of the helicopters are grounding at night right now because of weather conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have handheld thermal imaging. We have vehicles that have that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, where we can get to it. Okay. Uh, 
access points. Is what I'm okay. talking about, where we can get to that point. Okay. Who, who's got those resources? Thermal energy. Yeah. Most fire departments have that okay. available. Do you, do you remember when the last time was that you had some kind of search and rescue operation of this caliber? Uh, we do this, not, not for this many folks, but uh, we do search and rescue operations on every major event. And we unfortunately have a lot of these in this county. Uh, mainly we have two riverways uh, uh, that uh, tend to uh, bring us to this uh, uh, from time to time. So we're not unfamiliar with this. Uh, 98, 2003, 2007, Halloween floods last so it's it's not every day, but it's not unusual for us to see experiences like this sometimes. Did you say that the flights were grounded because of weather? Yes, sir. Since last night, or when did it? Uh, we had to bring down uh, most of the flight operations mid afternoon yesterday because of the ceiling height of uh, clouds. Uh, but we will run rescue where we know there's somebody at X location at night. Uh, even in uh, uh, bad weather, it just depends on the circumstances. With the, uh, everything from wind, rain, direction, everything is a factor when you're sending up a, a bird like that. We don't want to lose uh, the bird. Sometimes it's safer to bring ground troop crews in and go by boat. So just the one death still confirmed? Correct. Okay. And a any reports from medical facilities on injuries? No. Do you have any advice for the people that still live along these waterways that they are maybe going back to their homes today? Right. The, the biggest deal right now, uh, on top of the fact that the power lines are still in play, it looks safe but it isn't kind of a thing. Um, you, you've got uh, uh, water. Most of the uh, water out there are in wells that has to be boiled before you drink it. Cities, you're in good shape. <laughs> Most of those are, are taken care of. We have no boil of water notices in any city that provides water supply. But if you have groundwater, it needs to be evaluated before you drink it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, high fecal counts in the rivers from septics and from all the things in various areas throughout the county that need to be evaluated before you go marching down into those areas just to evaluate. Get in, get out. Um, I know people want to see their properties. Uh, something that brings some closure a lot of times and then they get out and stay out. But we prefer right now, don't even try. And I suspect the next two hours, two and a half hours, it's going to be raining. We're going to be right back at this again. And on the note of recovery, um, any indication yet if any uh, state of emergencies have been issued, if there's going to be any uh, seeking of federal help for this? That's uh, for the state to uh, do that work. We make our declarations to the state. The state asks the feds. I firmly believe that they more than exceed the uh, requirement for federal uh, guidelines for federal emergency management response uh, uh, on the back end. You have to keep in mind what FEMA's job really is. It's a recovery uh, group, not a response group. That's what everybody here is doing. We have time for two more questions. Anybody? Carly, you've referred to you about describing where the group of 12 was staying. Oh, do you okay. think you can do that for us? Um, really the most affected areas are the Flight Acres Road, Wayside Drive, River Road, and in Wimberley, and the residence was, was in that area. Um, we have roadways, like I just described, that are just a road full of slabs now. We, we don't have any structures on them at all anymore. Um, it's it's a, a devastating area, a devastated area, and uh, it's concerning for us with so many structures being missing in the time of day that uh, we are thankful that those reverse notifications went out and hopeful that um, all the residents exited those structures before they were washed away. Uh, but that's the most devastated area or the streets that I named in Wimberley along the river. Do we have a time when the governor's going to be washed away? Yeah. Do you have any idea of uh, the number of structures that were washed away? Uh, right now, uh, anywhere between 67 and 72 is kind of our rough count. Uh, we're trying to really solidify that number. Um, but that's the the piers that we can count or the slabs that we can count that are in that Wimberley area exclusively. You mentioned Wayside Drive. What about the Flight Acres area? Yes, sir. Flight Acres, River Road, Wayside Drive. Do you have an update on how many uh, buildings were damaged with the flood? Uh, that number is continuing to climb. Um, I know that we've, we've talked about uh, the 350 to 400 mark. Uh, I think we're at 
if we're just talking damage, n not determining the, the level of damage, we're upwards of 1,200, 1,300 at this time. Is there any way to estimate the cost of this infrastructure damage? We will estimate the cost. There, there isn't at this point. We haven't even begun to dig into uh, the roadway damage, um, any roads that need to be repaved, rebuilt, uh, structural integrity of bridges. Um, that, that's all still to come, and, and that number will climb, that dollar amount will climb substantially with, those, the, with that assessment. For, yeah. for example, there was a, there's that bridge on Fisher, Fisher <coughs> Road. Did, how, much, how much might that run? Uh, that's a, a question that I'm waiting for an answer for right now, actually. Um, we have we have some crews that are going out and assessing uh, those roadways that we know need repair or replacement, and uh, so we'll be documenting that and, and pushing that information up to the state as well. Any way to give a preliminary number, though, on how much damage? Uh, not at this time. At, at the next press conference, I, I can assure you we'll have some, some dollar figures, but uh, we're just able to get uh, those crews into those areas right now to really assess uh, that, that amount. There was a curfew in, in place. What did that mean exactly? Uh, so the curfew was really for public safety efforts. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the integrity of the roadways and the structural concerns of some of the, the buildings that we have evacuated, uh, we want to make sure that our residents are not getting themselves into an area that, uh, that is deemed dangerous, especially at night where it would be more difficult to assess the situation. Uh, that was really the main reason for the, the curfew uh, is to limit the risk for our residents and then limit the risk for our public safety officials as well. Um, obviously we're doubling up on shifts and we want as many uh, responders out there as we can and if we're doing more night operations because people are getting themselves into situations that, that are deemed more dangerous then they can't really focus on the day operations which we're really trying to do that search and rescue piece. You know, Wembley, everybody was, you know, they'd never seen anything like this. It's one of the biggest floods everywhere and of course that brought everybody out just to take a look. What kind of problems did, did that pose for dealing with the situations that you guys had? It, it did pose some problems yesterday because I, I think people were, were not aware that there is still there's still a, a existing danger out there. Um, I know the responders were reporting in that, that uh, residents were driving over bridges and just stopping in the middle of the bridge to get out and look at how fast the water was rushing. And obviously, that's not something you would do in a normal day-to-day -day environment, so it shouldn't be something that you would do in a, in a disaster scene as well. No, the curfew is continuing tonight. Uh, it's it's remaining in effect seven. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So what does that mean for residents if they go out? Are they going to be stopped by police or what? Yes, the, they would be stopped by police and questioned to what what they're what they're needing, especially in some of the affected areas. Um, the, those are the areas that we're obviously concentrating on. Um, we're, we're not limiting business activity. We're not saying that um, just because you want to go to a 7 o'clock movie and it doesn't get out before 9, don't go. Um, obviously, it's for a public safety concern, so uh, it's, it's for the affected areas mostly. Were there arrests or citations last night? No, there weren't. I'm sorry, you said it will be in effect again tonight? It is, yes. You heard some people talking about some looting. Y'all that no, uh, we heard some rumors of it as well. We didn't experience any of that firsthand. We, we looked into the situation uh, when we heard the rumors, uh, and, and we really deemed it just that. Uh, it's, it's obviously a, an added concern in this type of situation and, and a reinforcement of that curfew regulation. We want to make sure that our citizens' property is protected as well. A lot of people were asking me yesterday where they could, oh, people were already starting to try and help. Where can I bring stuff? Where can I drop stuff off, clothing, what have you? Right, we, we've received those requests as well, and as, as Mr. Bell stated, we just are not set up to receive large quantities of donations at this time. Uh, if you have stuff that you want to donate, please hold on to it. We will push the information out as soon as we're able to, to receive belongings, goods. Um, right now, any donation that you're asking to make, uh, we ask that it's a monetary one to a social services organization. Over 300 people at Wimberley High School uh, the night before, and last night, two. Correct. Um, those just people from out of town and they left? Most of them, well, I wouldn't say most of them. There are a substantial amount that were vacationing and, and returned home. Um, there are those that are more comfortable staying with friends or relatives and, and left the shelter to, to go see, seek those arrangements, um, and then some that moved to a hotel. Um, the <coughs> shelter was an immediate need that was met, and, and it'll be a need that, that we can meet if it, if it persists, but if it's not necessary, then we'll reallocate those resources elsewhere.